All right, welcome back to Doozer Shop. I've uh, been working on putting the Pratt & Whitney lathe back together. If you remember, last time I had the, uh, the cross slide off and the uh, taper attachment uh, regalia. I've identified a couple problems. Uh, with, uh, I started with uh, uh, a sponginess in the, the cross slide. When I was taking an interrupted cut, it, uh, the cross slide would, would, would jump. Uh, a good bit, maybe thirty thousandths, and uh, so. Anyways, I've identified a few problems, and uh, we'll try to address those and uh, to put them back together today. So uh, here we go. All right, just a quick recap of last time. Um, so I got the uh, the cross slide put on, and I was talking about making a shim uh, for the uh, the gib, and uh, let me see if I can. All right, there's a good shot of the gib adjusting screw with the slot. Of course, the gib on the right. And you can barely see in between the gib and the carriage, um, I'm sorry, the gib and the, the cross slide, a little shim. All right, you can just barely see in between there's a shim. And what that is, uh, is a piece of banding. Now, this is just a piece of strapping or banding when you buy a, a pallet full of stuff and uh, it's just uh, like 20 some thousandths uh, steel. Um, I don't know if it's spring steel or just medium carbon steel, but um, you know, you, you, what I do is uh, I'll take it on the surface grinder, you know, I'll make the ends nice, I'll make it the thickness I want and just shove it in there. Um, and because there's a gib adjusting screw on both sides, near and far side, it kind of keeps it in the middle. You can super glue these or Loctite these to the gib um, if you're that concerned about it. I did something similar over in the background there and the uh, on the Van Norman 22 uh, LU, probably can't see on the cross slide, I did something similar um, on that with a, a Gibbs, a, a strip, um, a shim. And like I said, I just ground it over on the, uh, the surface grinder and uh, quick is quick. So that's an advantage of having a surface grinder. You can make any kind of shim thickness you need, whether it be a strip or a washer or what have you. So, uh, so yeah, I got this on and uh, got this uh, ready to put back together. I got the, uh, the, the nut in there, the cross slide nut. But let's take you over to the bench and show uh, putting together the, uh, um, the part for the tape attachment that bolts on the back here of, uh, of the carriage and allows uh, uh, access to uh, anchor that uh, uh, sled. Uh, for doing the tapers. And it also, like I said, the problem was when you lock it out, when you lock that sled out, uh, it was having some sponginess, which is bad. So let's go over the bench. Alright, sitting vertical is the uh, the crossfeed screw. And uh, I, it's in its own bearings. I got the bearings on with my, my shim in between the bearings, my shim washer. And uh, I just stuffed it down in there. Um, it's a light slide fit in there. Um, and what I did is I put some, uh, some, some STP or some Lucas uh, motor honey in there, some real thick oil on them, uh, thrust type ball bearings, angular contact uh, type bearings. And uh, my next thing, I'm just going to tighten that up. I'm going to put that on. I'm just going to use some blue Loctite and uh, you know, I, I could put the uh, a ten a ten thirty two set screw in from the side, or a ten twenty four set screw, or a grub screw, whatever you call it, to lock it with a a brass or a lead pellet insert to not scar up the threads. But I'm just going to lock tighter for now with blue Loctite uh, once I set my adjustment. And to review before, 
Uh, before you could lock this down as hard as you could and the adjustment was set by the uh, thickness ground into the bearing races. Now with the shim in between the bearings, the shim washer in between the bearings, um, instead of this you just tighten it to the max. Um, you got to be careful now. Now this is actually becomes your adjustment for your bearing preload instead of having it uh, preset. So that's why I'm using the blue Loctite. So uh, let, me, uh, let me get the camera situated better and we'll, we'll continue on. All right, I got this blue Loctite. You gotta shake it. This stuff's probably 15 years old, but uh, <laughs> I have not found that it ever goes bad. Uh, I think it's probably just a, a high precious sales technique to get you to buy more Loctite on the, uh, the, the Loctite people's uh, recommendation, but whatever. So, uh, got a uh, little bit of amount of Loctite blue on there. Let me uh, All right, got her down, wipe my fingies off. And, and, and you know, I don't know if this is, fi this is final assembly or this could be just trial assembly if, if I don't like the way this is all uh, coming out, you know, how it feels, whatever. I always love to go back and forth with my threads, make sure the Loctite's distributed a little bit more evenly maybe. All right, so that's down touching. So I got my spanner wrench. You know, you want to have a, a decent uh, spanner wrench, not a, uh, um, a hammer and a chisel like they were using. All right, now I'm kind of going to do this by feel. Um, let's see, kind of give it a snug. Now I'm going to feel it. Ooh. That feels pretty nice. That feels uh, way more uh, tight, tighter than it used to be. Let me give it a little more gronk. All right, so I'm just hand holding this now. Maybe five foot pounds of torque or something. I like that, that feels good. And I'm kind of just going by feel here. Yeah, I think that's going to be way tighter, and that Loctite will set up uh, just fine. All right, let me see what I got there, maybe, maybe. I'm going to wipe off the excess Loctite, and uh, we'll start with the, the, the putting the ball bearings in the linear slide next, so uh, let me reposition you, and here we go. All right, let me try and get this figured out, uh, how it goes together. So I've got these. These are the, uh, the linear rails. And uh, I got new felts I put in there. Uh, they just kind of sit in. The, the, the counterboard for the cap screws uh, portion goes up. And if I remember, the felts went To this side? Well, let me look. See, this side, I don't know if you can see it, it appears to have the marks from the uh, the Gib screws, the Gib adjuster screws. So I think that side goes like that. Okay? And this side, of course, does not have the staining. Sometimes you get little witness marks and staining from rust or just whatever. Wow, don't knock stuff over, doozer. Let me put that, set that over here for a second. All right, so now, get the, uh, nope, this guy. All right, um, what do we want here? I guess these can go in dry. 
suppose. There we go. And this side. I think I can slide the balls uh, in. Can I? How's that going to work? I don't know if I can slide the balls in from the end because they got these these there. I can't slide them in from this side. I'm going to have to put the balls and everything on the cross slide and then set it straight down in there. I have to put all this stuff together kind of holding it with uh, three, three hands. Yeah, I can't do it this way. Shoot. Alright, well, scratch that. I'm going to need five hands to do it the other way. I'll show you. Alright, let me... So let me take these out. Let me set, set this on the chair. So, this sucker's going to go in that way. And... Ooh. So the first thing I got to put in... So, so that with the screwdriver slot, this thing engages the, uh, the actual uh, sliding block on the cross slide and it's got that little notch in there, that's a detent. Okay, so that face is up, I think. Yeah, that face is up. So now I, there's a, uh, a spring and a ball that goes in there. All right, there's the ball. There's the set screw. There's the ball. Where did I put the spring? All right, here's the spring. Put the ball in. Is there a up or down to the spring? Both ends look the same. Goes in there. All right. And now, I don't know if I should put a Loctite on this or if it kind of stops on its own. Let me figure this out here. It kind of seats. It doesn't kind of, it definitely seats. Okay. Get a little snug. So that pops down and that spring holds it up. Pops down and that actually gets threaded into the uh, the uh, the sled of the cross slide. And that pushes up. Okay, so that's in and tight. This is up, right? You know what? I was gonna make a uh, a piece for that while it was still apart. Maybe I should pause and do that. Because now I can fit it. Because I think this was, this was like 0.343, no? Three seventeen, three eighteen. It's probably three twelve. So I'll, I'll make it, you know, three thirteen. All right, enough of that. So now what I'm thinking, if this thing goes like that, and this actually no goes like that. So this goes here. So I think I got to put the rails on it. And then slide this whole joker through. So I think what I got to do is take the rails, put them there, put them there, 
put the balls in, and then set it in the whole casting. That's going to be a huge pain in the ass. Because I'll have all these balls in there. Well, let's try it. If I start swearing and using profanity, maybe we can edit it out. I don't know. Alright, that goes there, that goes there, that goes there. Alright. That putting the balls in. Put, putting all the balls. Nope. So these are 5 sixteenths. And if you remember, it only had three balls per side. And goodness gracious, we got 12 balls per side now. Heaven forbid we should do it the right way. I am fully expecting I dump all these somehow and I'll have to be... I got like three or four extra. Probably should have got 10 extra. But I... Either way. I say that now. How many do I actually got? Can you see or is my big fat head in the way? You can kind of see. I've got four extra. Good golly, Miss Molly. Alright, now... All right, so that dude goes there, and then this dude goes on the other side. Get ready here, the F-bomb, if this don't work out. <laughs> and all this stuff is clean, so that's not an issue. All right, now... If I could save time in a bottle, I mean, if I could get this thing... Okay. Well, hallelujah. Call Leonard Cohen. Shit is in there, all right. Got one. Got two. Now that should hold it. Get my felts in there. Maybe I was optimistic with my felts. I guess it's better than being pessimistic because then they don't do anything. There. Well, cool! That's in! I'm moderately pleased with that. Let me keep putting the rest of these guys in and I'll, uh, yeah. Yeah, anybody with a Pratt & Whitney... Oh, so something I wanted to talk about 
Uh, this, I don't know if I mentioned it last time, this is the ball bearing, uh, obviously, taper attachment. Pratt & Whitney on this lathe offered a non-ball bearing taper attachment. And the, the, what I think is going on here, the reason for the existence of the ball bearing taper attachment is not just solely because maybe it's more friction free and better. They had an eccentric relieving attachment. Now what that is, it's a, also called a backing off attachment used for relieving taps. If you've you got a, a four flute tap, um, it kind of crescent shapes the back relief of each flute. Or if you've got a countersink, you can back those off. At work we do a, a zero, zero flute countersinks with the whole, I think M.A. Ford makes them or uh, I forget who, but and we use an eccentric relief attachment on the uh, universal uh, tool grinder. So the backing off or relieving attachment had this same structure. So I think this is sort of part of the, the, the legacy or the whatever of the, uh, the backing off relieving attachment and they just decided the construction was so similar for the backing off attachment that let's just make it a uh, uh, a taper attachment uh, also. So that's kind of neat, I guess. And I am just uh, stoked that I got this on here without dropping balls all over creation. Which is rather nice. Now I, ho I hope these Felts take a set. Actually, let's see. Because there's Gibbs, uh, a, not, the adjusting screws on this side, you got to kind of just leave these barely snug, adjust them, and then final tighten them. And I guess they're barely snug. I can probably, well, let me tighten these. I need a smaller wrench and then uh, go with the back side there. See these here? Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Springy. Want to make sure that the nut, the, the, the locker nut... I'm going to have to get a uh, crescent wrench. Make sure that these lock nuts are backed off. Yeah. All right. All right. I guess that feels good. I feel good. Again, Make sure this nut is not going to impede the adjustment of the whole set screw there. Okay. Still feels nice. Um, back that off. Tighten that up. Just kind of finger tight. Not a ton of preload. Because it's ball bearing, uh, you know. So I can, I'm not going to do that one until... Let's see here. Yeah, these felts are going to be a problem. Maybe. I don't know. Well, let me get this adjusted. I rambled long enough, and I'll bring you back. All right, guys. We're going to try and shove this thing on. So just to recap, here's the taper attachment. Uh, I got all the, the pieces and guards and bits on. So I believe what we gotta do is start it in this way. And begin threading the screw
Come on, baby. There. It's in half the half. Uh, it's in the the nut, it's a zero backlash nut, and there's two pieces. Oh, I think it's in both pieces now. Yep. All right, so that's fine. Let me put some oil on it. This is Vactra number two. Might be a long process. Might have to edit this down a bit. Look at the dowel pins. And that's it. That seems fairly happy. Let me put the screws in and uh, we'll bring you back. Uh, yeah. Well, that was easier than I thought. Everything looks pretty kosher. I still got to run it through the range of motion and adjust these uh, tightening screws for the gib. Yeah, we'll see. All right, guys. <clears throat> uh, took a few more things apart. Uh, basically, what I took apart is this uh, um, this is where the dial goes okay this is on the front of the lathe the hand crank dial and uh, I really didn't understand what this was it said it was some kind of brake assembly for the cross slide okay so let me kind of show you this is this is the uh, the crank handle right and you know you got your uh, your graduated ring here, okay? So what the deal is, um, the uh, Allen set screws, there's two of them, create friction and the uh, the knurled knob, the knurled nut there is the uh, binder for the, the ring. So with the back side of these uh, Allen uh, set screws, grub screws, whatever you, you would like to call them, is uh, there's these two brass, uh, uh, they're, they're just uh, wear pads, I guess, to create friction. And uh, <clears throat> how this works, you kind of just screw that, and you know, it's just a, 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 a little piece of brass, and uh, and a coil spring, you know, just a regular little itty bitty coil spring. So, um, so that just creates friction. Why you would want friction um, on your cross feed knob, and now this is not dial friction. This is actual uh, keep the knob from uh, the hand crank from turning on its own friction. Like I said, I, I really don't understand why you would ever want that. I don't know. So that's what that is. Um, and when, when you tighten this, it forces out, well, I'll show you. You loosen it, loosening that, and the ring comes off, okay? So you can see the ring, obviously, right? But what the, the key part is, is uh, if you can see it, I hope you can. See that little uh, dowel pin that that comes up, right? There's like a a little uh, 
taper on that uh, probably 20 degree angle cone and it forces that up and it binds uh, up on the inside of this ring. So the ring, as you can see, free to spin, uh, tighten up the binder screw, forces that little uh, pin out and we're tight. But that, that little pin had some, uh, the head was kind of mushroomed over a little bit and it was kind of googly in the bore, uh, a little tight. Uh, so uh, I, I chamfered it in the lathe, just maybe added 10, 15 thousandths of chamfer and, and it feels, feels good. I can't tip this over without putting my fingers there because these will come, come out on the floor. Ask me how I know. So there's that. Um, that uh, handle goes on, the crank handle and the dial goes on to this, right? So it's got a, a key which keys into the, uh, the crank and it's got a bushing and it's got a gear and this long bushing with an oil groove, okay? So, and, oh, and you can see the internal spline, right? That's what goes uh, on to the, uh, the cross feed screw. So because it's a telescoping taper attachment, you got that spline. So this doesn't take the bearings. I showed that in the last time. The other piece takes the bearings. Good. Now, so that big housing, and, and here's the, uh, the cover for that housing, right? Inside that, is that little gear meshes on this gear, okay? So, another way to say that's what's going on, right? So, so that gets all meshed up into there. And what's the purpose of this big gear, you might ask? Well, I, I didn't know either. Uh, so I've been looking at it and how it was put together. See that pin in that uh, annular uh, groove? You know, that uh, ring type recess? What that does is that's part of the brake assembly. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? So here is the mating brass bronze uh, piece. I think it's bronze. And you can see the pin uh, right there, right? So that pin rides in that uh, recess, that circular recess, and the pins will touch each other. So if I put this together, right, hits that way. So what's that all about? Well, that's, I figured this out. When you tighten this brake, it's so you can back off one turn when you're threading to retract the tool and then go back in and set the tool and infeed with your compound. So this is just an in-out retraction uh, mechanism. It's a, it's, it's a placeholder mechanism, right? So that's cool. We got this hardened uh, shaft with a key. I, uh, I, and it's got a, basically it's, it's kind of like just a, a washer flange. But it, you can tell it's hard just with the threads and all. So that has a mating key slot in there. Um, no, I take that back. That's not a key slot. That's just for oil. That's an oil slot. The key, it keys into the main uh, housing. Yeah, that key doesn't register in there. And the key is still up there. So that key's actually into the, the iron housing. So so that goes in there. And here's your iron housing, okay? This iron housing, that uh, machined area is your friction surface. Uh, is that correct? I believe that's correct. Yeah, that's the friction surface. Goes This way? Yeah. Mm 
And then the key lines up with the key way. And that didn't hold, the key knocked out. All right. All right, we'll go with that. All right. So yes, this whole thing is the friction surface. So I'm gonna line that up, straight up. All right, perfect. That's how it's supposed to go. So that creates tension, yep. Okay, so yeah, the big faces are the friction surfaces. So that, here the, that's those two pins slapping. All right, so we got that in there. That's cool. Um, you can see this. That drops, uh, drops in here. So that's how that goes in. So that's cool. Um, this cover goes on. All right, that cover goes on. Put these screws in it. Snug. All right, so that's cool. That spins nice and free. Okay, here's that shaft, look at that shaft. That's cool, that's how that works, all right. So no oil, if oil gets in there, it just kinda assumes its own level. Now, with the back of that, there's a pin and three uh, recess holes, okay? So that pin, well first of all, these springs go in them holes, okay? One. Two, three, one, two, three. There's the springs in there and then the pin. And you got this, uh, oops, uh, thrusty, trusty washer there with a hole. Now the hole is for the pin, right? So that's the deal. And the handle knuckle, Look at that bronze brat, uh, bronze goes on the threads and tightens it. But I uh, I made a thrust washer. Uh, well, I, ha I have I have a, a needle thrust bearing, and the bore was like uh, 0.515 or 513. It was like, it like it's probably for a half inch shaft. So anyways, I made that little bushing on the lathe. I didn't film it. I made a little bushing because the threads where it goes on is 7 16 or 0.437. So the inside of that bushing is actually 0 0.4331, 0 0.431, which is the tight fit on the threads, and 0.513 uh, as the press fit into the point, uh, like 0.512, whatever hole that is. So just to keep it centered, that's what that is. So that'll go on there. It's a really line-to-line -line fit. Now I should have a, a hardened thrust washer on here, maybe, but it seems to, this is hard bronze and uh, it's rolling contact. Um, before I screw it on, I'm gonna put some Molly, uh, Molly molybdenum oil. Let me reach around and get it. All right. This is a little bottle, is castor, um, castor oil, Molly D. Uh, molybdenum, disulfate, uh, disulfide oil, whatever you want to talk, what do you, what do you want to call it? Oh, my head's not in the way. There we go, put a little in there for a good measure. Because this black Molly oil, I mean, this really, 
uh, keeps the wear down. It's really good for that. Make sure the pin is in where it needs to go. And there you go. All right. So that works. Um, let me kind of show you that hand, a handle screws in there, a little bat handle and tightens up. So that's uh, going to allow, um, so if I tighten it, then I should only get one rotation or just a bit less. Ooh. Because the gear ratio, it's more than one. It's like three, I think. One, two, two and a half. Well, that's cool. So you can back it off. And there's the hard stop. Clever, clever, very, very clever. That is so neat. All right. Awesome, awesome sauce. All right, so let me put the cranky, the cranky spanky on. Let me see how easily or not easily it goes on. That was pretty easy. All right, and another modification I made, that's uh, the socket for that is uh, inch and uh, five sixteenths. I didn't have a inch and five sixteenths socket, so I just, uh, I took a hammer, right? And uh, I, 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 I whacked it on there to loosen it, right? If you uh, hammer on just the inner edge, you can, it's like a, uh, it's like a way of loosening it. Uh, and this is just this piece of scrap aluminum. I didn't hurt this a bit, but you can see the spanner pinholes that I drilled in there on the mill. I added those, so now I can use my, uh, my spannery wrench and, uh, you know, make a, uh, make a nicer, uh, easier way to put it on and remove it. And they're not all the way through for strength and I, I didn't think I needed to drill them 100% through. They're, they're two thirds through. So that works. Um, kind of nice, kind of cool. So, put this on. And um, aside from that bat handle, I'm ready to put it on the lathe. Wow, I, I did you gotta see this. I mean, mind you, that's finger tight, but that's how them holes line up. I'm gonna put a little torque on it, and it's gonna be less than that perfect, but pretty cool. I'm gonna tighten that up, and, uh, and that's all right. All right. Oh. You see it? You're in frame. Yeah, look at that. It's pretty good. Let me put a little impacto on it, right? A little, a little bit of... All right. Well, that's not bad. It looks kind of good. You kind of wiggle these suckers out. They're a size on size hole, brother. We'll get it out. It's coming. There you go. So that's tight. Oh, and that that spins so nice. Let me loosen that. That spins way nicer than it ever has. Probably because I didn't realize that these uh, friction uh, dealios were in there. Yeah, man, this thing is uh, awesome. That's how it looks. And like I said, the, the handle screws on in the bottom there. So I, I got that off camera. Let me, uh, I'm so happy. I'm gonna put this on and uh, bring you back. Got the uh, hand crank assembly ready to go on right here. Just slides on the spline. 
no particular way, and uh, it's bolted up. Pretty straightforward. Pretty exciting to get this thing back on. All right, and make sure that's turned off. It's a little, I don't want to say firm, I want to say, or I, I mean, I don't want to say tight, I'd rather say firm, but I don't have oil in anything yet. And don't forget the back bearings are uh, preloaded a bit more than they ever were, but it's very smooth. Let me see how this dial works. Very easy to loosen, binds up very tight. So if I tighten the lock, so you would loosen the lock, you'd bring it to your, your number, tighten it, well, let me bring the handle to 12 o'clock, tighten it. There's your lock. One, two, and a half. One, two. And that's for threading. And loosen it. I gotta put the handle on it. Well, cool. I'm liking that. All right, awesome. Now, let me put the uh, the compound back on. It's a little oily. I think it's clean. I think it's clean. Lovely. That's on. That's on. Let's see how much deflection is on this guy. Kind of see where I'm putting my indicator, right? Zero, one, zero, there's two, three, zero, uh, three. I get three thou. Where the hell is that? I, I, I think it's coming from lift. Um, because the Warren dovetails, I think it's lifting up. What I can do is tighten the uh, the cross slide locking uh, dealio. This is the the gib screw and the gib lock. So we're gonna put that in. Goes this way. There's a hole, tapped hole here where that lock goes, which tensions the gib. Yeah, I get nothing now. Pull, 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 pull. So, right there. I got a half a thousand, so let's see if it cranks. Yeah, see it cranks fairly easily. Two thou, we loosen it. Two thou, we tighten it. 
one thou, you tighten it, half a thou, half a thou and you can still move it. Alright, so I'm convinced that uh, I got some up and down. And, and, and see, now watch, if I do this, no, oh, no, this way. Instead of guessing, you can measure, right? So, how much up and down play do I have? So there's zero. We pull on it. It's going... As a half a thou, it's going down, right? Pick up on it, pick up on it, half a thou. So it's not, that's not bad. I'm, I'm probably still getting, well, you know what? I don't know if you can see behind. All right, so the, this indicator is right on the nut. You can't see it. It looks like it's pushing on the cross slide. It's actually touching the bronze nut. Maybe you can see that. The test indicator, the inner rapid, is in, oh, right in the Acme thread, right in the thread form of the, uh, the, the cross feet screw. So now I'm going to brace myself against the surface grinder with one arm, and I'm going to get this hand and I'm going to push on the tool post. Uh, with all I can muster. So, if you can see, almost two thou. We got two thou moving on the federal travel indicator on the right, and on the left, the inner rapid test indicator, which is right on the Acme screw, and it is, I mean, it's touching it. I got nothing on the screw. So all that play is in the nut. Right? I got two thou. Uh, a little less than two thou play in the nut. I'm happy with that, I guess. I think I'm going to call this project done. Um, but at least, you know, this, this is how we verify stuff. Um, now, if I put this on, I had two and a half thou there. Or, or a two thou there, a little less than two thou there. Shoot. This thing is touched. Okay, I'm zero there. Now let me push on measuring the cross slide body. And it's the same. Uh, 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 uh. So that's in the nut. Now, should I? See. So these screws are like a worm gear. That one loosens and that one tightens. It rotates the uh, the, the two piece uh, cross slide nut. I was going to put drill and tap and put a uh, a washer and a retainer in the middle of this thing, but I don't think I have to because talking through it, if I'm getting the same reading there as I am on the nut, it's actually in the thread form. I think I, I think I'm good. I think when the nut, so maybe that, maybe I gotta adjust the backlash mechanism. Maybe there's flex in that backlash, uh, anti-backlash nut. I'll play with it, but the numbers I'm seeing here, folks, this is pretty good. But this is how you diagnose a problem. You keep moving your indicators around and applying your force until you figure out where the, the sponginess is in the system. Um, but you can see how I diagnosed that. I'm happy with this. I'm going to put the covers back on and, uh, and I, 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 I'm, I cleaned a whole bunch of stuff. I got to know this lathe a little better. Uh, it was well worth doing. I'm going to call this done and uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy about it. All right, guys, got you back here in front of the lathe. Uh, I got the uh, uh, the crossfeed handle assembly and the uh, the, the brake uh, assembly that I was talking about earlier all put back on. Uh, everything's uh, ready to go. All the covers are put back on. 
But I wanted to do a final little uh, uh, take here to show you guys uh, how this um, brake feature works. It's for threading. So when you, you usually you set your compound at 30 degrees or 29 and a half or whatever you know you can argue. Um, you do your infeed with your compound and your cross slide you set a zero. So you do your infeed with your compound, take a pass, and then you got to bring the tool uh, back, retract the tool. Um, so what this allows you to do is it sets a zero, you can retract the tool, uh, move it back to the home position, advance the depth of cut with the, the compound again, uh, crank the cross feed in to your stop, it sets an actual stop and said you don't have to keep following the zero, it sets a hard stop. Take your next threading pass, loosen the, cro uh, the cross slide, traverse back to start, advance the thread depth of cut with your compound, and bring the cross slide back to the stop, uh, which is zero. So that being said, let's, uh, let's show you here. So let's go forward. Let's say zero is right at the top here. Um, let's say that's zero, and let's lock the brake, okay? So if we lock the brake, we can't go forward. See? Can't go forward anymore. We can retract it one, two, even two, I think it's like two and a half, if you want. Boom, and it's right back on zero. So, uh, advance your, uh, basically advance your your cut up at the compound, take a pass, go down the line, it pops off, if you, if you got the auto stop set up, retract your uh, tool, go back up until it stops, it sets your uh, more depth of thread, come back in, engage your cutter bit, make the pass. So. That's how all that works, and uh, you can see, can you hear it? And if I just loosen that, then I can go any which way. So that's how that works, wanted to show you. Thanks for, thanks for watching uh, me take this uh, Pratt & Whitney Model 12C, take this lathe apart and clean it, and uh, do a little bit of diagnosis with the dial indicators. So basically, I went from about five thousandths of uh, springiness uh, by just me pulling on it to about uh, two thousandths of spring and um, I have isolated that two thousandths completely exclusively to the half nut which I need to adjust a little bit uh, because it's a, uh, a split half nut uh, for backlash compensation so I think maybe I'm gonna play with it a little more but I'm pretty happy with that um, it's nice getting to know your, your machine uh, by taking it apart, learning. Um, you can study that uh, manual if you have one all you want, but it's only going to completely make sense unless you get in, take your stuff apart. Um, it's almost like uh, a Bridgeport mill. I've taken probably five or six, seven Bridgeports apart in, in, in my years of working on different stuff. I know I've taken all the power feed gears out in the head, I've stripped it completely down, put it back together. So it's not a big deal to work on something um, when you know uh, how to do it. It's like not even a big deal. Like, uh, like working on uh, common engines, Ford V8s, Chevy V8s especially are nice and easy. I mean I can strip a Chevy V8 down in 15 minutes. I mean, it's just, uh, I've done it so many times, you know, um, and I'm sure you guys can relate to the engines, that's why I bring it up. But machine tools are no different. Um, it may look intimidating in the schematic when you've got a gearbox and a headstock or, or, or a power feed box, and there's like 65 gears in there or something, but, you know, when you take it apart for real, uh, it's not too bad. So don't be afraid ever to dig into something um, and nowadays with the cameras and, and, and your phone, you can take pictures as you go if you don't trust yourself. 
I've never had that, I've never done that, but my brain remembers pretty well. But um, thanks for watching, uh, thanks for all my subscribers, and, and thanks for the comments. I really enjoy, I respond to pretty much every one of your comments, and I love hearing from you guys. And, uh, you know, even going back and forth trading insults is kind of fun too, you know. Uh, and uh, if somebody uh, comments on my video, I will check out their um, YouTube uh, channel and I, you will subscribe. Um, and uh, a lot of cool guys just starting out, a lot of experienced guys. Um, and, uh, and, and that's so much fun, you know, the collaboration. And uh, I gotta get a sticker made. I need to, and then we can, you know, everybody likes stickers. I guess they're cool. I don't know. But anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Do The Shop.